Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. Let's dive into the latest news and rumors around the Dallas Cowboys. And we're going to begin with some injury updates, the one I know you guys want to hear about. Trevon Diggs, is he going to play this week? I was going to give this two stars after the surprise appearance on the injury report. I am now bumping it up to three stars. I am very happy that Diggs got a full participant label in practice today for the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday. Getting a full participant uh, effort on Thursday is a sign to me that Diggs will be able to play. Now, he suffered that injury apparently during the Week 2 win over the Atlanta Falcons. My suspicion is because he did not miss a snap, he's going to be okay to go. Now, Diggs has been, in reality, I think the best corner on the Cowboys. That's not exactly saying a lot, but... With all the injuries around this team, you need Diggs out there. Now, he, this, this could look a lot worse if Diggs, if Julio Jones hadn't dropped that pass because Diggs got beat on that one as a touchdown pass. Didn't matter, so the numbers are a little bit better. He also should have a pick. He, he dropped a pick, too. But you need Diggs out there because Cheetah Bay Awuzie, he's not going to play this week. Diggs, I think, will now play, but... Reggie Robinson has not been active. He's more of in a redshirt year. You can play Brandon Carr at corner, but they're moving into safety full-time. Anthony Brown's on IR. All of a sudden, you're down to your top three corners, and you're banking on Jordan Lewis and Daryl Worley to play a big-time role for you. So I am optimistic that Diggs will be able to play. This will be worth monitoring throughout the week leading up to game day. Hopefully he's fine. I feel a lot better that he got a full practice in today. That means a lot at least from my perspective, but I do want to hear what your panic level is at right now. Rate this for me on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being you're not concerned at all. I think it's a great secondary. 10 being you are in full-on meltdown mode. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and get your votes in. Let's talk about Mike McCarthy now. Is he being too aggressive? No. No. Absolute fake news on this one. Bucky Brooks, who noted coward, but by the way, says McCarthy's being too aggressive. Shouldn't have gone for two points early. Shouldn't have gone for the for the fourth down tries. If you have issues with the two point play call and the fake punt play calls, I'm on board with that. I I didn't like that decision either. However, I look. We spent how long, guys? complaining about Jason Garrett being too conservative. I will gladly take aggression. I, that is exactly what I spent months and years arguing for. So yeah, I don't think McCarthy's being too aggressive. I think it actually makes sense. If you want to dispute some of the play calls, I'm fine with that. But I want more aggression from, from seeing Jason Garrett be an absolute coward for years as Cowboys head coach. Now, if you guys want daily Cowboys videos, well, then subscribe. We are rapidly approaching 100,000 subscribers. I cannot wait to get there. That's going to be the new goal in the near future because we already got to 69K, baby. If you want to join the number one Cowboys channel out there, hit that big red button and subscribe today. I promise you no one will keep you more updated than we will here at the Cowboys Report. Let's talk Dak Prescott then. Is he going to be MVP? I actually say maybe. I'm going to give this one two stars. I think there is a possibility that Dak can earn the MVP this year. Now, as we've mentioned many a time before, you need wins because that's how MVP voters operate, and you have to put up stats. Based on two games, you got the stats, some of the wins. That miracle comeback certainly helps there. But our friends over at BetUS put together some new MVP odds. Russell Wilson, the current betting favorite, plus 275. I think that makes sense. Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, okay, I get that too. Aaron Rodgers, plus 800, everyone's favorite sleeper, making him a favorite, not a sleeper. Kyler Murray, plus 1,000. Then all the way down there, Dak Prescott, plus 1,800. I think those are actually really good odds for Dak Prescott. So if I were you, I'd go place a bet over with our friends at BetUS. It's chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code COWBOYS125, and if you do that and you place a bet on anything, literally, we have a new deal for new BetUS customers only, specifically, folks. Tell you what, fantastic offer here. I'm surprised we're even allowed to do it here. If you place a bet, you sign up and deposit, 
For the rest of the month only, we'll give you guys a Cowboys jersey. I have, I have enough available now. I, I got some more. I, I got a good hookup there. So it's chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code COWBOYS125. Gets you the 125% deposit bonus for the rest of the month only. For new users only, new depositors only. If you sign up, deposit, place a bet, I'll hook you guys up with a Cowboys jersey. It's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code COWBOYS125. And in fact, if I were you, why not double down on Dak Prescott? You put down 25 bucks on Dak to an MVP, you'll win 450 Those are some awesome odds. Like, think about this. So you you put down a hundred bucks with BetUS. Twenty five of that goes on goes on onto Dak Prescott to win MVP. If he wins, you win four fifty. And if you email Cowboys at chatsports.com, we'll hook you guys up with that jersey. So if you have questions, you can email them Cowboys at chatsports.com. We'll get that email in the, in the comments in the description as well. And if you don't like email because you're a weird person, my Twitter DMs are also open at what going downing. Let's go now to some defense talk because it's not very good. Adjusting the Tank and Griffin style in terms of standing up, hand on the ground, all of that. Three stars on this one. Everson Griffin has said he's going to go back to having his hand in, on the ground in the dirt. He likes that more, is more comfortable. I approve of that one. I think Demarcus Lawrence should, should do the exact same thing. Now, we'll see if Tank even plays this week. His knee's been bothering him. Also, his wife just gave birth, so... Congrats to Tank. That's awesome. And if he does play after having a kid, he's going to go off. That, that is a verifiable fact for NFL players. If they have a child, they have the best game of their life the, the, the following game. It always works out that way. But overall, this pass rush has been a significant disappointment because Everson Griffin, I think, has been the best pass rusher. It was Alden Smith in Week 1. Smith was a complete non-factor in Week 2. Lawrence had one pass breakup, a couple pressures, been a great run defender, but he hasn't been very good. So if I'm the Cowboys, I am looking to get the, the pass rushers, Lawrence and, and Griffin in particular, back with their hands in the dirt. I just, I, It was a good idea. It hasn't worked so far. Let them do what they are more comfortable with. I think that will pay off more for the Cowboys. Now, you're going to need the pass rush this week because the Seahawks uh, receiving core is awesome. At least the first two guys are. Also, Russell Wilson's playing like the best quarterback in the NFL. Tough to bring down. I don't know how many sacks the Cowboys will end up getting this week against the Seattle Seahawks, but I want you guys to get your votes in. Make a prediction here. I'll set the over-under at two-ish. Um, I think that's a, a reasonable hope. Russell Wilson does hold the ball longer, which will lead to more sacks. He's also you need to get to making guys miss in the pocket. So get your votes in. I see three and four. How many sacks for the Cowboys against the Seattle Seahawks? All right, time for the stupidest thing you'll see all day here. How about playing Blake Bell in more tight end sets? No, you idiots. This is a terrible idea. Shout out Bleach Report with a fun concept of What's one, who's one player who should get more playing time for, for each NFL team? And they threw out Blake Bell. Here's the problem with this idea. It's just stupid. Because the whole point of having offensive firepower is to get your five best guys on the field. You know who's not one of your five best guys? Blake fucking Bell. Like, I, I like Blake Bell. He's a good number two tight end. You want to put him on the field and take C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, or Michael Gallup off? I mean, were you recently dropped on your head? Like, what are you thinking? How does that make any sense whatsoever? The Cowboys' goal when they took C.D. Lamb was to run 11 personnel. You should not be getting away from that. Utilize your best players. Putting two tight ends out there is just asinine. The answer is C. CeeDee Lamb should play more. If you want to use Blake Bell a little bit more in like goal line sets, okay. If you want to use some two tight end sets, okay. But in general, the idea of putting Blake Bell on the field more to take CeeDee Lamb off of it, like that sound, even saying it sounds stupid. Why would it be written? It's a horrible, horrible idea. Absolutely fake news. I always like bringing up the dumb stuff that we see because we just have to call it out to keep people honest here. The answer is C. If you type in B, I'm blocking you from the channel. I, I, I'm not standing for it. I don't see any Bs, so thank goodness there. Oh, there's a B in there. 
from a real Cowboys fan. You liar. You're out of here. We're going to have to get rid of him. N no, no other options there. Insanity. Now people are just typing in B to troll me. That's fair. All right, Tristan Hill. Back to actual talking points and actual fair discussion. Uh, apologize to him. Yep, I'm going to do it. Uh, and I think a lot of us need to in general here. Four stars on this one. I'm not saying he's suddenly great. But... Tristan Hill has played decently this the, the, these first two games, and I think that matters for the Cowboys. Like, I had pretty much given up on him. Gerald McCoy's injury might have given him a roster spot, spot regardless because they were kind of thin. And although the stat sheet isn't overly impressive, and this is not saying much because the defensive line has been pretty bad overall, Hill's arguably been the best defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. Also not great. He's also 22 years old. If he can continue to show promise and growth, I'll feel a lot better about the future of Tristan. Now, make no mistake about it. Hill has to get better. He has to do more for this Cowboys team. I I'm completely serious with that part. But I like what I've seen out of him. If he can keep it up, it won't be the worst pick ever. Don't get me wrong. They still should have taken Juan Thornhill. But Neville Gallimore is not ready yet. He's a round three pick. That isn't a huge surprise. Hill still has room to grow, but I think maybe this week, next week, or whatever, you're going to see Tristan Hill get an actual sack for the Cowboys, and that's going to be a fun moment for him and Cowboys fans everywhere. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.